Hello students, uh, once again welcome back to the world of uh, Vacuum Technology. So last class uh, we have uh, seen some uh, technical terms uh, related to Vacuum Technology. So this time we will continue with the discussion on uh, different uh, technical terms which uh, we will be using in our uh, subsequent video classes. Okay. Uh, so uh, these technical terms are highly uh, useful uh, whenever we discuss vacuum technology in different other contexts uh, because essentially we know vacuum techniques uh, we are going to use as a basic requirement uh, to do many other experiments as uh, uh, listed in the previous class okay so uh, in that context uh, let us today discuss some of the terms uh, the first one is uh, what is called inlet pressure and the second one is called exhaust pressure so there may be a question what is inlet inlet is nothing but uh, the point the place uh, at which uh, any pump any vacuum pump takes the air from some other region some other container or you can say inlet is that point uh, which is connected to uh, the any container any vacuum container uh, in which uh, we are uh, expected to produce vacuum so that is called inlet and uh, there is a pressure that pressure is called inlet pressure and uh, there is an exhaust as uh, shown in the figure you can see uh, that is the point uh, through which uh, the gas uh, pumped out gas is being pumped out sometimes the exhaust point may be open to the atmosphere so in that case in that case exhaust is atmosphere uh, at some occasions uh, what may happen the exhaust may be open to some other pumps for example you can connect uh, two pumps in a series or three pumps in a series in that case uh, exhaust is uh, something with the space phase of a secondary pump okay so uh, depending on the situation the uh, term exhaust may vary anyway exhaust is the uh, output side of any pump and inlet is the input side inlet is the side side through which gas enter into the pump thereafter uh, pump makes some action on the gas uh, and uh, as a result the gas is being removed and after removal of the gas gas reaches at the exhaust side okay so uh, first term you have to define is inlet pressure uh, so this is defined as the pressure at the intake side of the pump okay this is the intake side through which gas is taken into the chamber so that is uh, represented with the pa Oh, okay, is it clear? Uh, then uh, uh, intake side is usually connected to the vacuum container where pressure is lower than the exhaust side. Okay? So, this is that point which uh, we usually connect to the uh, container or vacuum chamber or maybe an accelerator, maybe a thin film deposit in the chamber or anything like that, a cathode ray tube, anything like that. Uh, so, inlet side will be always connected to the a vacuum pump or device which are wherever you want to create that okay and where where pressure is lower than the pressure and the exhaust that must be always uh, clear and uh, as we discussed uh, sometimes inlet of one pump may be connected to the exhaust of another pump that may have so okay this inlet may be connected to exhaust of another pump uh, that is called a series connection of pumps series connection of pumps okay uh, many uh, frequently you can see that uh, pumps uh, always do work in series as a pair and maybe one or two pumps connect in the series they may be of different types they may be of similar types but the series connections are mostly used in order to achieve vacuum in any kind and these are uh, some typical type of vacuum pump this is uh, what is called a rotary pump okay a rotary pump uh, this is a diffusion pump uh, about these pumps uh, we will be discussing in our uh, subsequent videos and uh, we have many other pumps like uh, this is called a turbo molecular pump it's a very modern pump using very many advanced experimental techniques uh, this is called a, a sorption pump uh, this is a rotary pump again uh, different models 
and uh, uh, again uh, we have to talk about what is an exhaust pressure we have already seen inlet pressure so this uh, what is an exhaust this is exhaust the region or side to which the air or gas drawn from the vessel is expelled by pump is called exhaust side okay. so shortly uh, it is that place or space or region into which a gas is uh, pumped out okay that place is called exhaust side and uh, and pressure existing at that side or at that region is called exhaust pressure exhaust pressure okay this may be uh, mostly atmosphere exhaust side or it may be the space of a secondary pump we usually call that pump as a, a roughing pump this is maybe a roughing pump uh, or it may be uh, the atmosphere itself you can pump the gas directly out of the container to atmosphere then atmosphere is the exhaust side and at many occasions uh, you may have a second class of pump in pumping your gas to the uh, roughing pump okay in that case exhaust side is the uh, environment of a secondary pump okay and here is the second term what is called attainable pressure or uh, more correctly you can say lowest attainable pressure lowest attainable pressure is uh, it shows the uh, capacity or efficiency of a pump it is that pressure uh, or minimum the lowest pressure that uh, one can achieve with a particular type of pump that is called a lowest attainable pressure okay. it may vary from pump to pump certain pump may give you say 10 raised to minus 2 torr certain other pump may give you 10 raised to minus 4 torr and at another class of pump you may get perhaps 10 raised to minus 8 torr so uh, depending on the design construction cost this technology used different pumps can achieve different levels of pump so how much uh, low pressure you need that depends on the type of experiment you are conducting okay. many advanced uh, experiment may require very low pressures so we have to rely on rely on uh, such a type of vacuum pumps and many other pumps need uh, i mean comparatively uh, higher pressures like uh, 10 raised to minus 1 torr or 10 raised to minus 2 torr then you may depend on uh, 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 low cost uh, pumps so that we will discuss in detail in, uh, in our subsequent classes. So here is uh, what is defined the lowest uh, attainable pressure. It is the lowest limit to which the pump pressure in a given vessel can be reduced. Okay, so it actually shows the ability of a pump. It is varying from pump to pump. So uh, that's a very simple idea. And uh, here is another important term that is called the pumping speed of a pump. Pumping speed. Uh, this is one of the criteria or uh, parameter by which a pump is usually classified according to pumping speed. Some may have high speed, some may have lower moderate speed, some may have low speed. So uh, you can define pumping speed as the volume of uh, gas that is being removed from the system per unit time. From the vacuum chamber and the pressure existing at the inlet of the pump. Okay, so it is uh, in words to note here that pumping speed is always defined uh, at a given pressure. Uh, just like uh, when we define uh, the resistance of a diode, forward resistance, uh, backward resistance, we define the resistance for a particular current or a particular voltage. Is it uh, just like that? Whenever we define pumping speed, we have to specify at what pressure you are mentioning the pumping speed. That is very important because pumping speed is not a constant thing. It may vary from pressure to pressure. Say 10 atmosphere, the pumping speed of a pump may be one particular value. And uh, you reduce the pressure now. Again, you measure the pressure at some lower pressure, say one atmosphere. Or, or say, uh, one uh, torr, uh, your pump uh, pumping speed may be again different. Again, you measure the pumping speed, say 10 raised to minus 
four tor. Okay, tor means the tor is only uh, you know one tor is equal to one millimeter of mercury. So when we measure pressures like this, uh, you can see that uh, pumping speed vary from point to point. So that must be taken into account. So you can uh, represent pumping speed as p. So a speed at a particular pressure. That is why we have a subscript p here. So pumping speed S P is equal to d V by d T, and we have specified the pressure. So always pressure must be specific. <coughs> Whenever you uh, mention the speed of the pump, <coughs> you have to mention the pressure. And what pressure you are mentioning the pumping speed, and it is usually represented in uh, unit of meter per second. I hope the idea is clear. And another important parameter is uh, what is called the pump throughput. Uh, represented as Q. Pump throughput is uh, defined as the product of the pumping speed and the inlet pressure. Okay, uh, this is a more physically valid, uh, physically significant parameter than pumping speed. Okay, pumping speed is a comparatively a arbitrary, arbitrary statement. The volume is not so rigid. Because we know we are pumping gases, so it's uh, uh, mentioning the volume is quite arbitrary. Okay, but uh, throughput that is more precise and uh, which, uh, which have some concrete structure means it actually tell you how much uh, quantity of gas is being pumped. You can mention the quantity in terms of grams. You can mention the quantity of gas in terms of number of atoms removed, like that. So that's why we are saying uh, it is more precise, accurate in, uh, definition. Okay, so this is the, uh, defined as the product of pumping speed, uh, pumping speed is SP times pressure existing at the inlet PA. And SP we have already seen that it is a dV by dt rate of change the volume of the gas inside the cylinder. Times the pressure accessing at that point. Okay, so it is uh, different from pumping speed. Okay, pump through. And its unit is uh, pressure is measured in tor, and uh, volume rate of change is measured in meter per second. So tor a meter per second is the unit used to define throughput. Okay, so in a pumping system, uh, throughput uh, is constant everywhere because the rate of uh, decrease of uh, gas uh, as the pumping goes on. You, here you are mentioning it in terms of actually in terms of uh, gram per second. Okay, gram per second or number of atoms per second. In that uh, sense, it is more accurate and physically meaningful. And uh, that is what is shown here. Physically, it is the mass flow rate and the pump intake flow. Mass flow rate. Okay, that is why. Uh, we represent it in this form also, P is equal to dm by dt. So it is more meaningful. Why? Because volume uh, you can define in different way. Uh, for any particular volume, uh, the gas uh, amount of gas may be different for different pressures, may be different for different temperature. So mentioning volume of a gas is not physically uh, that much relevant, but uh, mass is uh, very relevant because. For any pressure, any volume, if once you measure mention the mass, this is exact, a concrete idea. And uh, you can see throughput you can either represent it also gram per second also. Gram per second also. And in some time we can define it as the time rate of change of the product of pressure and volume. So you can uh, write it like Q throughput is equal to. Uh, differential of uh, PV with respect to time. Okay, so you can pressure is constant. You can define it as P into dV by dt, and it usually do not happen because in a container, as the pumping goes on, pressure will definitely decrease. Okay, pressure will definitely decrease. So we go for the second equation. So here you can see Q is equal to volume times dP by dt. Uh, this is possible for a given volume of a container. Okay, its volume is fixed. Pressure may get reduced as the pumping go on. Pressure may get reduced, so you can uh, more beautifully define the uh, throughput is equal to 
volume times the dp by dt. Again, unit will be same. Volume is here, dp by dt is here. We can check back that uh, uh, unit of uh, throughput is same, F dy. So uh, that is uh, shown here, tor meter per second. And interestingly, if we can work out is uh, one tor meter second of air. You can take normal air, atmospheric air, and you can define that. Uh, is suppose uh, from any given pump, uh, a pump has a throughput of one tor liter per second. Uh, uh, you take it as air. Air is uh, pumped out, and its the throughput is one tor liter. That means that that particular pump can pump out. 0.0017 gram of air per second. It is a calculated value. You can also work out it. And here is the another important term <coughs> that is known as uh, pump compression ratio. Uh, and this is also an important parameter which characterizes the efficiency of a pump. And it is defined as the ratio of the exhaust pressure to the inlet pressure. Exhaust pressure you, can, you have seen that may be either the atmospheric pressure or it may be the pressure existing in a secondary pump, okay, and inlet pressure that exists in the vacuum container. And you can define it mathematically uh, like this uh, pump ratio, compression ratio is equal to P exhaust divided by P inlet. So, and, and you can see that it directly indicates. The amount of work that has been done by a vacuum pump to drive away the gas molecule from the system. Okay, uh, what does it mean? That means uh, if uh, pump compression ratio is high, then it means that its ability to do work is very high. Or in other words, it has a much higher capability to reduce the pressure. Suppose uh, the compression ratio of one uh, pump, particular pump is say. Uh, 10 raised to 4. What does it mean? Ah, that particular pump can reduce the pressure uh, by, uh, suppose initial pressure is uh, say uh, 1 torr. So 10 raised to 4 uh, capability means you can reduce the pressure up to say 10 raised to minus torr, minus 4 torr. Okay. From 1 torr to you can reduce the pressure to 10 raised to minus 4. Understand? So, what we get is 1 divided by 10 raised to minus 4. 1 is exhaust pressure, uh, uh, 10 raised to minus 4 is inlet pressure. So, 1 divided by 10 raised to minus 4 will give you 10 raised to 4. Understand? So, uh, that way you can find uh, uh, by noting down the pump compression ratio of any machine, any pump. You can get uh, an assumption. You can get an idea about how low pressure you can create. In fact, how low pressure you can create. Just by this calculation, you can find out. And here is an important uh, derivation now. Uh, that is called differential equation of a uh, pump. That is called pump downturn. It was, uh, in fact, uh, derived by formulated by Langmuir. So it is also called Langmuir's equation for speed of a pump or Langmuir's equation for pump downtime. By knowing this equation, we can calculate the time taken by any pump to reduce the pressure to a particular value. Understand? You have this equation. Uh, using this equation, you can uh, find out the time taken by a pump to achieve a particular pressure. That is very important in uh, experiments in modern uh, many research purposes, uh, researchers usually calculate the pump down time in advance and accordingly they set their experiments, measurements, etc. However, this equation is very useful. A typical uh, vacuum pump follows this equation, differential equation of a pump. Uh, what does it say? It uh, states that uh, rate of change of pressure in a given chamber. Okay, uh, that is pressure is decreasing, uh, that is why this is a negative symbol, negative dp by dt. Rate of decrease of pressure in a given chamber is proportional to many parameters, it is proportional to pumping speed, it is proportional to volume of the chamber, you can see a vacuum chamber here, we take it as a vacuum chamber and pump is here. So pumping speed depends on uh, 
pressure not pumping speed rate of decrease of pressure depends on pumping speed it depends on the volume of the chamber it depends on the pressure accessing at that particular point and uh, uh, lowest pressure that uh, uh, you want to achieve at p0 ultimate pressure uh, you want to achieve that is called p0 okay this is the pumping the differential equation of any pump usually a mechanical pump and uh, you can so now modify this equation like this dp by p minus p0 is equal to s by dp a simple uh, rearrangement we have made and uh, now you can integrate it easy because variables uh, we have removed and uh, assume that uh, pump is operating and uh, at a particular instant of time uh, let uh, p1 be the pressure in the chamber and uh, another instant of time say p2 let the pressure inside the chamber be p2 okay then you can easily integrate it just like uh, you do it for nuclear integration or nuclear uh, decay exp expansion you usually do just like that we can do it here you see yes we are integrating this uh, equation differential equation from a pressure p1 to another pressure p2 we can do it very simple the standard differential form is given here uh, the variable here is p and uh, the variable here is dt uh, this is nothing but a, a integral 1 by x form that will usually give you a log x understand and uh, this is simply a constant times dt so integral will give you s by vp you have the limits uh, t2 and t1 here you have the limits the limits p1 and p Okay, here the, uh, uh, the resulting function here will be log log p minus p zero, and uh, it's a matter of uh, simple uh, operation. You can do it by yourself, and uh, you check that uh, you will be getting an equation like this: pumping speed times t two minus t one is equal to the volume of the chamber will be log exponential p one minus p zero by p two minus p zero. Okay, this is the standard form of language equation for uh, pump down time of a pump. Now we can simplify the equation very easily. This is the, gen the mass general form of this equation given here. And here now you can assume that P0 is 0. That means the uh, lowest pressure that we want to achieve is P0. Uh, then uh, P is P0. Okay, you can imagine P0 is P0. Then automatically this equation becomes P1 by P2. Log P1 by P2. Okay, so we get a T, and you can also assume that the initial time is uh, starting time is zero, that is P1 is zero, and T2 is some particular time, say small t. So this becomes S times uh, small t, which you get the volume into log P to the base P1 by P2. Okay, so we simplify the equation. You can see again, uh, simple rearrangement of this equation will give you small t is equal to v by s log to the base e p1 by p2. This is also the pump down time. The time taken to pump down gas from a given channel. Okay? With uh, initial pressure is p1 and the final pressure is p2. You can even write in exponential form, no harm. Uh, it is also possible. But uh, this is here. This is called pump down time. Our Langmuir situation for pump down time you may use the equation and solve various problem and find out the time taken to pump uh, how much time the particular pump takes to pump down the gas from its chamber okay, this is a very valid equation very useful equation for uh, researchers and experimentalists whenever do whenever they do experiments okay this is another form of that log exponential exponential function uh, base E is removed and then we have a decimal base logarithm here, 10 base logarithm here, 2 by and the 3 0 3, V by T, log P1 by P2. Okay, these are all useful form of the uh, pump down time. And uh, uh, now here is another term called conductance of a pipe. Okay, we have so many pipes used in a vacuum chamber through which gases are moving. We have to pump out the gases. So here pipes and hose, tubes, etc. are just like wires in a electrical system. 
between wires in electrical engineering, we usually define conductance of a wire, uh, resistance of a wire. Uh, in a similar way, we have here conductance of the pipes because gas is flowing through it. So, uh, different pipes uh, for, uh, offer different type of resistance depending on, depending on the geometry of the pipe, depending on the surface characteristics. Okay, uh, internal, interior, wall surface like that. So, how it is defined? Uh, it is defined like this. Through put uh, through any desired vacuum element like pipe, hose, valves, and nozzles, openings, etc. When the vacuum system is indicated with an expression like this, the throughput into a pipe. The throughput means the gas flow rate, it's gas flow speed. That is equal to some constant into pressure difference. Suppose you consider a pipe, say P1 is the pressure here, P2 is the pressure here. So if the gas want to flow like this, what should happen? P1 should be greater than P2, then only gas will flow. So throughput will depend on P1 minus P2 by support and it also depends on conductance C of the pipe. Okay. So we define the conductance. It's a, uh, uh, it's a proportionality constant uh, which relates throughput and the pressure difference. Okay. You can define conductance as a proportionality constant which relates throughput of a pipe with the pressure difference. Okay, and uh, here P1 minus P2 is the differential, pressure differential or difference in pressure between the inlet and the outlet end of a pipe, or maybe there is a motor also. The motor also have inlet and outlet. So, uh, so C is a constant uh, for known as conductance. And you can also write represent conducting like this ratio of the throughput divided by difference in pressure. But that is not so important thing. Uh, first one is more important. Q is equal to C times P1 minus P. That is more important. And its unity is liter per second. And uh, very important thing is that conductance of a pipe depends on cross section area of the pipe. That is very important thing. And even it depends on the length of the pipe. That is another very important. The interior surface roughness is another important parameter on which conductance depends. And the pressure difference, of course, we have written it here. And the type of the gas being pumped. Okay. Different gases flow at different rates. Usually, we flow, we make flow uh, mixture of gases, but in many cases, uh, separate gas may also get pumped out. So, in different contexts, uh, conductance may vary for different type of gases. And you can define a pipe resistance uh, making use of the conductance. It is uh, uh, just like uh, uh, we define Ohm's law in electricity. Here, resistance you can define as the reciprocal of conductance. Okay, Rp equals 1 by C. Is it okay? So, uh, it is the inverse of conductance. For a series pipe connection, effective pipe resistance is given by this form. Yes, sir. If you connect a number of pipes in series, total resistance of the pipe will be uh, sum of all the resistance, individual resistance of the pipe. And in parallel series in connection, you can connect, connect the pipes in parallel way. So, of course, where the resistance uh, decreases, conductance of the pipe, effective, <coughs> effective conductance of the pipe in this. So, we get the uh, resistance, uh, 1 by Rp is equal to the total effective resistance. And they are 1 plus, R2 plus, and they are 2 plus, so and so. Okay. These are very clear. Uh, in often in many cases, you will have to connect your pipes in series. In many other cases, you will have to connect the pipes in parallel. So, accordingly, you can use an equation. And uh, this is another term, very important term, known as uh, mean free path length of gas molecules. Okay. Usually, when you uh, fill uh, some gases in a container, what happens? Uh, the gas molecule may get uh, undergo successive collisions. They are under constant random motions. They are moving around in the space. So, what happens when they move? They will uh, continuously, okay, frequently collide with the uh, neighboring molecules uh, filled in this container. So, their path may get deviated. So, the 
distance traveled by the particle in different collisions may be different. Sometimes the distance this path may be say one centimeter, this path may be 0.5 centimeter, maybe three centimeter, say five centimeter. So in different collisions uh, they may travel different different distances. So we take uh, a finite number of collisions and we add all the distances. We add all the distances divided with the number of collisions. That will give a value. It is called mean free path length. Mean free path length. You can define it as average distance that a molecule travels in a gas between two successive collisions with other molecules of gas. I hope the idea is clear. You have to find average distance. For finding average distance, what you have to take, you add all the path lengths, add all the path lengths. And now you divide it with the total collisions. You divide it in total collisions, you will get the mean free path length. You get the mean free path length. Uh, and theoretically, it has been found that uh, mean free path uh, you can find as 1 upon 1.44 pi d square n by n. Well, what is n? What is d? What is v? And is the total number of particles inside the container? And this is the volume of the container. Okay, so n by v will give you number density, number of molecules per unit volume. And what is d? D is the diameter of any molecule. Diameter of any molecule. Uh, okay, so we have 1 by 1.44 pi d square n by v. And uh, here d is the diameter of the molecule. And n by v is the molecular density. Okay, this is a uh, theoretically calculated value, very, very much useful for various calculations. Okay, and uh, molecular density is another parameter, it is very simple, it is the average number of molecules per unit volume. We have already defined n by v, so it is uh, not a big thing. Uh, this may vary with pressure and temperature in a particular chamber, okay, may vary. A density measurement is an indirect method of pressure measurement because when you pump down the gas from a given chamber, pump out gas from a given chamber, what happens? The molecular density is uh, the thing which is decreasing. Okay, so molecular density you can measure with various techniques. We have spectroscopic techniques. Okay, spectroscopic techniques by which you can measure the molecular density and uh, by which uh, by this method. You can measure pressure indirectly. So this is very much important. Pressure measurement is very much important in deciding the suitability of a uh, chamber for doing any particular experiment. Okay, to ensure the suitability of a chamber or a container to do any particular experiment. In this context, uh, let us define another term that is called Nutson number. Nutson number denoted as K. Nutson number is uh, uh, very important in uh, classifying the gas flow through any pipes or in any machines in any pumps. Okay, uh, it is basically a ratio uh, between the mean free path and the dimension of the chamber. Okay, suppose it is a chamber and the particle is continuously moving here and there, that may have an average path length, mean free path. You can define the dimension. Dimension in the length, the breadth, the height, anything. You can uh, you define a lambda with uh, uh, the dimension of the container. That ratio is called Nutson number. So, very simple Nutson number is defined as the ratio of the uh, mean free path of the gas molecules in a chamber to the dimension of the chamber. Dimension means maybe height, length, breadth, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, for pipes, you can define mean free path. Uh, for pipes, uh, the diameter of the pipe will be the uh, dimension of the pipe. For a chamber, say a cube, uh, a cub cubic like chamber, the height, uh, length, breadth may be the dimension of the chamber. Understand? So, this is very important in classifying different types of gas flow happening in a uh, vacuum system. Uh, so, using the concept of uh, Nutson number, uh, we can define gas flow. There are different gas flow designs. Gas flow design means glass flow ranges or grades. 
first one is uh, uh, natural number suppose it is very very less than 1 understand uh, then we call such a gas flow as viscous flow or continuum flow that means in whenever a natural number is much less than 1 gas is flowing like a liquid gas is flowing like a fluid fluid is something which is not compressible okay or, or uh, like a water flow you can for, for, for that matter uh, where friction is very important viscosity is very relevant uh, understand uh, and then flow like a uh, liquid understand continuous flow that is why we call it continuous flow but often in vacuum uh, systems continuum flow is not proper we flow uh, second category of flow known as molecular flooring where natural number is much greater than one in a molecular flow region. Flow is influenced by the collisions between the gas molecules and the walls of the vessel. Okay, here uh, density of gas is very less, very less, okay, and the uh, walls of the wall, collision with the walls of the vessels are very much important and we take into account. And there is a number in between, uh, uh, okay, uh, that is called Kn is equal to 1, natural number is equal to 1. Uh, this is called a transition stage, okay. That means a, a stage lying in between viscous flow and molecular flow. A stage lying in between viscous flow and the molecular flow, that is called a transition stage. Not neither viscous nor molecular, okay. So this way we can classify the gas flow into these three regions. These are very important in uh, vacuum technology. So now uh, here this is the time for your assignment. This is a question. What is uh, throughput of a pump? Okay, you define throughput. Okay, uh, read it uh, clearly and read other resources. Try to make the answer of this question. Here is the second question. Define the term pump compression ratio. Okay, you uh, don't simply copy the terms of the definition from the video. You study it properly and uh, make your own proper definition. And uh, uh, third question is write down the Langmuir equation for a vacuum. A okay, pump down time, how it is derived, we have seen. You try to write uh, the equations. So these are the three assignments. And uh, now signing off. Uh, see you next time with another video. Thank you, all of you.